This week on the iRacing Downshift, we get ready to kick off the eNASCAR season. We nailed the package. The package. <laughs> we highlight some of the action from Bathurst. <laughs> Australia. He Australia. invented a new country. Yes. And Kevin gets ready to head to his new second home. To look for the four guys wandering around with iRacing gear on. All this and more, so strap in. Welcome to the iRacing Downshift. I'm your host, Greg West. I'm back with the boys, Kevin, Bobba, and Chris Leone. We have one heck of a week here at iRacing. You may have heard about it, something about Coca-Cola, E-NASCAR. We're going to get to that here in a little bit. Kevin, how you doing? Awesome. We had a great weekend here at uh, iRacing. Most of us were here this weekend at a iRacing. Lot, <laughs> lot of, a lot of work going on. Uh, the guys, especially in the broadcast area, are working really hard to get the broadcast going. Drew, and Cisco, and Alex, shout out for late nights, early yeah. mornings, and no time and off. Exactly. <laughs> but it's coming along nicely. Uh, probably some of you guys listening know that we've been doing, running tests over the last couple of weeks. Each a one gets a little better. A test. Yeah, got another test tonight, <laughs> and we got the big race tomorrow. <laughs> We're in good shape, though. Everybody's feeling good. Stuff's all working great, sounding good. You got a haircut? I did get a haircut. You know who didn't get a haircut? Chris, how was your weekend? <laughs> well, it was uh, haircut free, um, but other than that, pretty good. Uh, enjoyed the uh, real world clash um, <laughs> and what was left of the, uh, the vehicles real on world track. crash. Is that what you said? Crash, <laughs> clash. Oh, clash. I'm hey, sorry. hey, we nailed the package. <laughs> yes. Okay, we nailed the package. The package. <laughs> yes, <laughs> things that we're gonna hear a lot of this year. <laughs> So my weekend was interesting. I did. Uh, I got talked into doing one of the uh, the BMW 12.0s. Nice. And uh, did you win? No, 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 no. Did you crash? Maybe. <laughs> did an uh, Australian member fall asleep and crash you? Not this time. Okay. Oh. That did I happened. get 16 <laughs> X's on one lap and turn? Ouch. I just parked it. I was like, Ouch. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I've never had a race where it, that happened. I'll, one of which I will own is my fault. The other three, though, that was just chaos. But wow. a lot of fun. <laughs> Anyway, these things happen. Uh, obviously, we're going to be talking about eNASCAR here in a little bit, but we're going to start off with a couple other things, some cool uh, announcements we're making today and updates. Uh, first of all, this one's going to be, I hope, pretty popular. I actually got to give some good news in the forums just a little bit ago. We made an update to our Nürburgring 24-hour uh, class roster uh, as well as cars. That's we a special event that's running this summer, right? That's this later this summer. It's in April. We've got time. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I was uh, accosted in the forums because we had a McLaren in there, not the Porsche, a Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car. So we did. We made a couple of changes. We pulled the McLaren out of the GT3 class. We put the BMW Z4 GT3 in by popular demand, and we also added a fourth class. Yes, that race will have four classes, and the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car will be included in that. Please stop sending... Uh, hate mail i think me. everybody will love it it's a great race uh great great lineup of cars should be fun we're gonna do it uh, Team staff infection? we could <laughs> we gotta decide if we're doing sebring first we'll, we'll have to practice yes yes we will you, and people have seen us drive <laughs> the nerve <Nürburgring. laughs> but yeah that's pretty cool news light giving news uh good news for once and then we announce uh we're announcing today as soon as the podcast is over and by the time you guys hear this hopefully it's live <laughs> the iRacing Nürburgring Endurance Series formerly known as the VLN Endurance uh, Championship we've got nine races coming up we have changed that structure almost completely trying to modify or trying to m to uh emulate the real world, we're going to try something a little bit different. We're going to have five car classes, GT3, GT4, TCR, Porsche Cup, and the MX-5. Uh, GT3 cars are going to be the BMW, the Audi, and the Mercedes. TCR, of course, is going to be the Audi Porsche Cup. You can probably figure out which one that one is. And the MX-5, once again, you can figure out what that one is as well. We're up in the car count. going to have 60 cars available in each split. I have confirmed and double confirmed that we can do that. Sorry, race spot in advance, but it should be a lot of fun. Extra long warm-up, <laughs> I think, for that one. Extra long warm-up. So it is. T you can team race it, but you don't have to. If you want to run them solo, the races are anywhere from between four and six hours long, and we'll have that entire schedule up in the forums and on the uh, the website very, very hashtag soon. So exciting stuff going on. Speaking of endurance racing, Kevin, we had a, something going on this weekend, though. Bathurst 12-hour went off this past weekend. Good time uh, by all, from what I hear. Uh, tons of driver, biggest one we've had ever. 
Um, Over a thousand more entries than last year. Yeah, which was I think the biggest. something like 3,300 drivers participated. Mm-hmm. So uh, pretty awesome. Uh, that that's quite the track. I was too scared to drive it uh, in an official session. Uh, I, I will admit that. I would like to race it at some point, but. Definitely need a lot more practice. We're going to have to get good first. So <laughs> so m- might be a couple of years. Then. <laughs> <laughs> get good. Uh, it's some pretty. Uh, uh but uh, on that, the, just to finish off that thought on, on the Bathurst special event, the next one is Sebring coming up in a month. So mm-hmm. start practicing for that. Maybe there'll <laughs> be team staff infection. We also had a lot of notable drivers uh, doing the, the race solo for charity. And now while the results aren't counted in the official results because you are required to have a teammate, it's a great opportunity to raise some mo- uh, money for some good causes. Kevin. Matt, Matt Malone. Matt Malone. Uh, <laughs> iRacing streamer extraordinaire. He had, uh, did it all by himself. I think you told me he ran the most laps had out of anybody. Most laps which is, out of anybody. I guess makes sense since he ran it solo. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I watched his stream for a little while. I even saw Roxy in the background uh, taking a nap while Matt was uh, <laughs> having a sandwich uh, at <laughs> one of his pit stops. <laughs> He's also the cleanest driver out of everybody. That's impressive. In, in, in the event. But he also raised a ton of money for a great cause. Over $3,000 for... Correct. Australia Zoo Wildlife Warriors. Awesome. There you go. So or as nice he job, wrote, Matt. As he wrote in his tweet, Australia. <laughs> Australia. <laughs> he Altralia. invented a new country. Yes. But hey, good work by him and anybody that supported him and his cause. So. And everybody that didn't wreck him was they were you know around him. We appreciate that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Moving on to things that drive in circles. NIS gets kicked off this week, Chris. Kind of a big event. Yeah, NASCAR iRacing Series coming back yet again. Uh, multiple time slots throughout the week for both the uh, fixed and open classes. Great opportunity to drive those uh, NASCAR Cup Series cars. And th- for those of you who don't know what the NIS Series is, since that's an iRacing thing, it mm-hmm. is the uh, the Class A cars, so the uh, NASCAR Cup cars, racing in, in a series that follows the real-world uh, schedule uh, exactly. So m- normally we have 12-week series, and we kind of we do follow it uh, the schedule as best we can, but this one actually spreads out from this week all the way to uh, October, whenever the real series Phoenix ends. Phoenix in November. November. Yeah. So it gives you an opportunity to race what you're going to see on the weekend every week. Are you going to run it Daytona this week? You want to you going to jump <laughs> in the driving lab in the big monster rig and, and take a rip at it? I was thinking about it, but uh, probably not. I, I'm actually thinking about running one of the fixed ones. I'm hmm. not. I'm, I don't have the the time to to develop an open set, but I think I might run one later this week and and see how long I last or see if I'm the one we that causes the big one. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Soon. Somebody else. <laughs> but speaking of NASCAR and e-NASCAR, Kevin, tomorrow's the day. The e-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series kicks off tomorrow night. Ding, ding. I got it right. Yeah. So, no, it's awesome to have Coke on board. And uh, the, the, the big race is tomorrow night. So uh, tune in 9 o'clock, right, Eastern time. Yep. You're yep. asking? I was <laughs> you kind of marketing <laughs> director yeah. of marketing at iRacing. I hope you get this one right. Yeah, so <laughs> so we're doing the broadcast here from our new studio, who where we are sitting actually now. Doing mission our Control. That's right, Mission yeah. Control. Pretty sure we can launch a shuttle from here. The podcast group just gets the back table. We don't get to touch any of the cool uh, mixing boards and all that. But uh, I want to push a button. Yeah, don't do that. Don't, uh, do don't that. touch I anything. I think we could, but uh, you don't want to invoke the wrath of Drew. He no, no. <laughs> Like no. we said at the beginning of the show, Drew, Cisco, Alex, our whole team has been working their tails off, getting everything right. We've got a new graphics package. We've got, you know, how many test races have they done? How many emails have I we gotten from I couldn't even tell Drew? you how many uh, they've done. A lot. How many yeah. people were driving C-Fix this week and found themselves on the stream? I'm right. just saying. <laughs> but we've also got a gr- lot of great content that we collected at the, uh, the media days that we did at Charlotte and NASCAR headquarters uh, roughly a month ago now. So that's really cool. So expect to see some some new interesting things on the broadcast as well as some great racing. Speaking of content, Chris, at Media Day, you had an opportunity to sit down with pretty much everybody. And you've got a couple interviews. We're going to talk. Uh, we're going to go with Evan and Justin. Yeah. So um, we'll start with, uh, again, we got two interviews. Uh, the first, Evan Pasoko, the voice of the E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. If you tuned into our broadcast on NBCSN last year and discovered us that way, uh, he was the play-by-play voice you heard. He has been calling the series for multiple years. Uh, the second interview we've got today, uh, Justin Melillo of The Racing Experts, who is basically the premier e-NASCAR journalist, has been covering um, the e-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing series, dating back a long time. Uh, so Yeah, both the these guys joined us at the Media Days, uh, which was a great opportunity for, obviously, us to interview them, but for those guys to meet with and interview all of the drivers, as well as some staff, to get a different perspective on, you know, what the series is all about. 
exactly. And I can't think of two better experts to bring in to the podcast to have just kind of a different view on everything that they've seen over the years, what they expect. Um, Evan's day job is actually with uh, Monster Jam, so we've got a little eNASCAR Monster Jam talk in there, too. All right, so without further ado, Chris, Evan, and Justin. All right, thanks, guys. We are uh, here with Evan Pasoko, the voice of eNASCAR on iRacing. Uh, Evan, great to have you on the show for the first time. No pressure, right? You, you guys have had some good guests, so I listen in all the time, so it's cool to be a part of it. Yeah, no, it's it's a little bit different for you, right? You're you're the subject of the interview rather than the voice who's leading the whole conversation this time. Yeah, f- flip it around, which is good because, you know, keep it fresh. Um, but, you know, normally I have to do the interviewing, so something different. Yeah, it's always interesting to be on the other side of the mic a little bit. Uh, let's kind of get into your background a little bit because obviously coming into a role like the role that you've come into it doesn't just happen overnight so let's sort of start from the beginning of your career uh you know how did you get into sim racing and kind of what's been your path in voicing various series to uh get to where you are it's crazy because i would actually watch the peak series back in 2012 2013 watch the broadcasts on youtube that was actually how I got introduced to iRacing. It was through the broadcasts. And I have a wheel. I don't drive a lot. Um, but I actually got my iRacing subscription and a microphone before I got a wheel. And I sent a bunch of emails around. And this is when the broadcasts for League stuff wasn't that big. It was a couple of people were doing it, and it was still very new. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I sent a couple of emails around. I think I sent like eight or nine, and I got one back. And someone said, you can come do pit road with us for a couple of broadcasts on Friday night. So I did that. So I was commentating races mm-hmm. before I was ever actually driving on iRacing. Uh, so I'll drive sometimes, but it, that's not how most people get into it. It's kind of like the opposite. Yeah. Um, and I'm happy that it worked out. Uh, I've been not only doing the peak stuff for a couple of years now, mm-hmm. uh, but ever since that first day, I've been doing league broadcasts basically weekly mm-hmm. uh, for the last six, seven years now. So when did you get that call to do peak? And you know what was it? What was it like to? you know, take over as the voice of the eNASCAR series for the first time. So that's a good story. So mm-hmm. uh, so when RaceBot picked it up, uh, Will Vincent reached out to me. And I had done some of the RaceBot stuff and LSR TV stuff with just leagues and whatnot that was outside of peak. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he had asked me if I was available on Tuesday nights to cover a series. Mm-hmm. And I let him know, well, I, you know, I could be available, but I didn't want to do anything during the peak time slot because I liked watching those broadcasts. Mm-hmm. So he goes, well, it's going to be at 9 o'clock Eastern on Tuesday nights. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I can make it work, but I, I'd rather not. And he kind of paused <laughs> for me. And he goes, no, it is the peak series. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so I was, I was totally didn't catch on for the first five minutes of that conversation. And he finally came out and said it because uh, I thought it was just a crazy concept. That's not even where uh-huh. my brain went, right? Right. Because, uh, like I said, that's how I got into iRacing is by mm-hmm. watching the broadcast. And I thought, that's really fun. That's kind of what shaped going to college and getting my degree in journalism mm-hmm. and media studies was watching these broadcasts getting involved with it on the iRacing side mm-hmm. and it's just kind of become this whole thing so that was a, a funny conversation of how i got into it uh and it's it's been a ton of fun since uh, mm-hmm. i've been joking all week that i've been bored on tuesday nights because i've got nothing to do now <laughs> um, it's i know a lot of people who don't do the broadcast stuff can be intimidated by the concept of it mm-hmm. and for me that's the easiest part of all of this is the broadcast because it's just so much fun Um, and when the racing's good like we've had it makes our job so much easier uh, and I just have a total blast calling the races. Yeah and you've been calling the series obviously for multiple years now and so you've seen some pretty big changes the biggest really being last year when some of the pro teams came in and now we've got 2020 where the entire field is professional teams I mean what's it been like to be a part of that growth over the past few years and just how much has it changed the racing how much has it changed you know, what you've been calling on track. It's incredible. And I know that my stint calling the Peak Series now to to head into a fourth year of doing it, uh, I've seen so much growth in this period. I know it's been a gradual progression through the 10 years that we've already had to this point. Um, But when the teams came in next year, I mean, not only from, you know, 2016 to now, uh, but also 2017 to now even, um, when we started calling the races, but just the start of last year to the end of last year, because we really didn't know mm-hmm. 
how the teams would play into everything. I mean, we expected mm -hmm. that it was going to be a lot more exposure, and of course, a lot of those teams had connections with iRacing anyways. Right. Um, so I think a lot of them were really good fits, and then you had a couple of the esports organizations in there as well. But there was still kind of a question of how that would actually play out, and mm -hmm. I think it exceeded even like the best possible expectations for where we ended up at the end of the year doing the championship race on national TV for everybody mm -hmm. to watch. So, like, my little portion and my little contribution to it in the last few years is only a small part of, like, the, the grand scheme of things. But it's such an upward trend now mm -hmm. that if we see any sort of growth continuing like that last year into this year, um, then we'll look back at this time where we think it's crazy how big it is now. Ten years from now, we could look back to this season and joke about how small it was at that point, right? <laughs> so I think you can only keep going up. Um, and the talented drivers that we have and their ability, you know, to put on a show like they have. And, and if people tune in, they've seen the incredible racing we've had, not just the finishes, but, I mean, start to end. Mm -hmm. uh, that two, two and a half hours uh, is nonstop action. And I think that uh, it can only keep going up from here. Now, I think you had kind of the tweet that really encapsulated, uh, you know, all this. I, I think it's still pinned on your Twitter. It was the post your biggest flex of the previous year. And it's, you know, voice of Evan Pasoko on NBCSN. I mean, that had to be just a, you know, do you ever think that you were going to be calling races on live national television? I mean, I guess when I watched that first broadcast, I thought, uh -huh doing a YouTube broadcast was like, that was the goal. Yeah. And now that the Peak Series is on NBC and we did those selective dates, um, it was nuts. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, all the coordination that went in between the folks at iRacing and NBC to make those possible. Um, and then I Skyped in with the people at the, the studio that they had. Um, so there's all these people in the studio. Uh, you know, you had Parker and mm -hmm. Steve and all those guys on the broadcast. And then me at home in, right. in the same computer chair that I call all the other races <laughs> from. There's this whole operation and then me at home. And it was, <laughs> it was just such a crazy dynamic. Um, I had the TV on next to me. I didn't do it for the uh, all-star races that we did because mm -hmm. I was terrified. I tried to stay like zoned in. I didn't want to like think of it as anything other than just a normal broadcast. Right. Uh, but we did the homestead when I had fun with it. So I had it on the TV next to me. And uh, I had people like tweeting pictures during the race. And mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, with the growth of the series at the start of last year, if you had told me at the end of this, we're going to be calling it on NBC, I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> so if you told me that even four years ago, I, it would have been even you know, less of a, a concept. But maybe that was good yeah. to not like, get too over-psyched about it. Yeah. Um, I don't get nervous about the broadcast much, but it was a little bit terrified. But it, it, was, <laughs> it was so much fun to work with all those guys. Um, so I, ha I had to make that the, the biggest flex of the year. Yeah, and, and you got to call probably the best finish of the year on that homestead race too between last Jack year's was real good too yeah but and even in our all-star races we had good races but mm -hmm. you know we've seen that a couple of times with this series the fact that because it's all you know simulated cars there is no physical difference in the cars from you know one team to another aside from setups and whatnot right so everybody like it's talent based only like it's mm -hmm. totally merit on who gets into this level um and of course could have wrecked the guy in three and four, but they kept it clean mm -hmm. uh, with so much on the line, too. Yeah. I think was a really good representation uh, of our series. And I think, the, you know, the, the values and how much these guys respect each other, because kind of like how, you know, people within the sim racing circle know each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, these drivers know each other, too. And a lot of them meeting each other for the first time this week, yeah. last night at the hotel even. Yeah. Uh, but that respect to with you know, a hundred thousand dollar purse on the line, forty three thousand dollars to the champion to go side by side into the last quarter and to not take each other out and for me to not pop a blood vessel and be able to call the <laughs> whole thing in, in one fluid motion was it was great. Yeah, you and all the rest of us in the <laughs> racing yeah. office. Yeah, every everybody on the edge of their seats. Right, that's I mean. why that's why I say mine I think I have the easiest job because I'm just a fan at the end of the day. And I'm just we're all screaming at the end of it. Yeah. I'm just screaming where everybody else can hear me. Yeah. Fan with a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> so I do want to talk, obviously, the 2020 season. I mean, a lot of these guys coming back, you know, whether they were top 20 in points or earned their way back in through the Pro Series, a handful of really talented names that were not in this championship. As a matter of fact, a lot of names that go way, way back in the history of the series. I think you can count on one hand the amount of pure rookies. So, you know, with how good the racing was in 2019, I mean, what do you think it's going to look like in 2020? I mean, what are you expecting out of uh, this year's championship? 
it's it's only going to continue to get tighter. And of course, you know, with the the relegation and only the top twenty being locked in, you're mm-hmm. forced into that position where, I mean, even if you just put together a bad campaign one year and you can't put it together in the pro series, I mean, that's it. Like it's a very mm-hmm. short leash. Uh, so there is no, you know, contracts that you're guaranteed a ride here. I mean, everybody mm-hmm. has to perform. And of course, with the the member numbers on iRacing continuing to grow and the way that this series is going to get more exposure, there's going to be more people trying to get to this level. And it's going to become increasingly more difficult when you have, you know, a good portion of those 100,000 plus members saying, that's my goal. Because mm-hmm. I, I feel like a lot of the drivers who are in the series now, when they first got on the service, mm-hmm. like that wasn't the goal that wasn't their intention when they first set out for it they kind of right. learned about it once they were already sim racing and then they had taken steps towards that so now you're going to see more people trying to take this as a direct route mm-hmm. so you already have an extremely competitive series and mm-hmm. as we go into this year it's going to be even more tight and i think that's only going to continue i mean five six years from now mm-hmm. it's going to be insane so i think that uh it's going to be fun uh i love that uh you know we get to keep up with obviously the rules package of the cup series so that adds a, like an added a little bit of a challenge for the drivers because they have to adapt year to year and whatnot um but if we if it's anything like we had last year with the exciting finishes uh which are, are the easy things to that not a lot of people see you know you get a good finish mm-hmm. you clip it and that's what they see on the video uh but just start to finish i mean mm-hmm. the racing is great um and the respect between the drivers so it'll be interesting if we start to see more new faces you mentioned like true rookies not a ton of them, right. and more faces coming back. Now's the time to do it with the prize money going up. This is, yeah. this is the time <laughs> to get into it. Yeah. Um, but I, th- I think that dynamic as well will be interesting to kind of track and see how much of that old guard or like the established names mm-hmm. can stick around for another five years. I think it'll be a lot harder to be here for the next five years than it was the last five years, and that's only going to continue to be more true. No doubt. Now, I do want to shift gears a little bit because I think out of – anybody involved with this series who is involved with two motorsports, I think you probably take the cake for the two motorsports that are the most different from one another because, you know, at the beginning of the week, you're calling these E-NASCAR World Championship races, and then at the end of the week, you're flying out to Monster Jam. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing over there because it's obviously a completely different role for you. It is. um, So I'm a competition manager with Monster Jam. So I work on one of our Monster Jam stadium tours. Mm -hmm. Um, So during the springtime of the year, so basically January through April or May, uh, Monster Jam has about seven different tours running across the U.S. every single week. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm on one of the three stadium tours, so that means we're either in a football venue or a baseball venue. uh, And competition manager would suggest that I oversee all things competition related. So at the end of the day, Monster Jam is, is family entertainment. That's how I got into it. My dad mm. took me, my, you know, my parents took me as a kid, and now I'm working for him, which I think is crazy. Same with you know, doing these eNASCAR broadcasts, same kind of thing, uh, where you, you're a fan and just totally privileged to be able to be a part of it. So basically, during Monster Jam racing, uh, we have a finish links timing system camera that's accurate to one ten thousandth of a second. It's the exact same thing if you ever see a photo finish camera in the Kentucky Derby and horse racing, same mm. camera. So we use that to track our winners, uh, if a truck breaks down, which happens a lot mm-hmm. in Monster Jam, got to go back and bring somebody <laughs> back into the bracket. So that timing system will tell me who the fastest loser is. We'll bring them back. So mm-hmm. that's all for racing. Uh, for our two-wheel skills and freestyle competitions, fans can vote on their phone. Mm-hmm. So I run that in the background. So it'll tell me, you know, we had 5,000 fans vote. This is the average score. So I type that into our bracket project. That goes to the big video board in the venue. Mm-hmm. So it's all competition-related things, which I like. It's a mm-hmm. little bit nerdy, but it's, <laughs> it's a ton of fun. And, you know, motorsports in general, uh, you know, Monster Jam and NASCAR, I think a lot of the, like the, the viewership and the, the demographic fans bleed in between the two. But mm-hmm. on the track, they're totally different from <laughs> one another. But it's tons of fun. I mean, all my mm-hmm. Monster Jam buddies, when we're not gone on the weekend, we normally travel Thursdays through Sundays. Uh, at least I do. Uh, if I'm not calling peak on a Tuesday night, if it's an off week, we've got all my Monster Jam buddies, that staff, that's some of our drivers. We're racing in the sim. Right. So it's, it's really fun. No doubt. I mean... Being able to travel for that, obviously, we're here in Charlotte doing this as part of eNASCAR Media Day, and you've actually got to fly right back to uh, Los Angeles for Anaheim. So, I mean, what's the travel schedule kind of like for that? 
It's a little bit crazy this week uh, mm -hmm. because we're just getting started up. I wish I could stick around for all the fun, but I <laughs> figured a day was better than none. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're flying back to L.A. tonight, and I got to be in Anaheim for our first one. Uh, Supercross was in Anaheim last week. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of staggered those back to back. So Supercross is in a city one week. Monster Jam is probably there the next week. Uh, but I fly out on Thursdays. Uh, I'm at the venue nice and early Friday morning, set up the timing system camera. We meet with our building contacts. A lot of our staff's there like Monday and Tuesday, especially dirt crew building the tracks. So there's a lot of people that work a lot harder than I do. Uh, but it works well for me. Flying Thursday, Friday, we've got practice. Basically, all the trucks get a shakedown. That's how we set our racing bracket. Saturday mm -hmm. is the show. I mean, we're there all day. Pit party shows at 7 o'clock, uh, and we're all packed up 2 or 3 in the morning and, and fly home Sunday. And that worked good because when I was still in school, I would have classes all day Monday. I would work Tuesday in the day and do the peak mm -hmm. broadcast at night. I'd also have school Wednesday. Then I'd fly out Thursday, come back Sunday, do it again. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously you guys at Feld Entertainment, you own a lot of the trucks and uh, you know, all these trucks have very different personalities. So I'm gonna kind of spring this on you. Out of the eNASCAR drivers who are qualified this year, I'm gonna name a few trucks and you tell me, out of the drivers in this series, the guys that you've met, the guys that you've watched race, who do you think would fit these various okay. trucks the best? Uh, we gotta start with Gravedigger because everybody knows Gravedigger, right? That's the one that's been around the longest. That's the one that everybody knows. And I mm -hmm. think so then the, the easy answer for that would be Ray. Just simply name uh -huh. recognition. Because that's <laughs> a lot. I mean, there's a, we talked about, you know, a lot of these drivers have been in sim racing for a while. But as it starts to become more mainstream, mm -hmm. there needs to be a name that more casual viewer can, can latch onto. So I think that would go to Ray. And he's... <laughs> If you, if you go back to, you know, Dennis Anderson and, and uh -huh. Gravedigger, he's a four-time champion, so Ray as well, so I think Ray that's a, a good fit. Yeah. yeah. Now, I was always an El Toro Loco guy, so i got to stick that one in early. I've got some buddies that drive El Toro, which is, yeah. which is crazy. I mean, friends that I would go to shows with when, when we were younger, and now they drive El Toro Loco. So that's a fun, it's a fun truck. Shoots the smoke out of the front, so kind of laid back. <laughs> I don't know. We were just talking with Clampett upstairs, so maybe yeah. I'd maybe I'd give that one to him. You give that one to him. Yeah. All right. Uh, I mean, how about Scooby Doo? Who who do you think would be the? Because that's a family friendly truck. That's true. That's a little innocent. Christian's been pretty chill so far <laughs> this week. He's been very. He got in late though, so he wasn't out at B Dubs last night and whatnot. Oh so yeah, we'll with we'll the rest see of us. If, we'll see if he's unwind a little bit, but he's been pretty chill. So Scooby-Doo is actually one of my favorite trucks. So yeah. I like that one. How about Zombie? And and we actually, we talked at yes. dinner last night about Zombie's kind of got an interesting portion to it about how you guys time. So I, I actually, I'm bringing up Zombie for exactly that yeah. reason. So if you've ever, if you haven't seen it, just Google the, the Zombie Monster Jam truck. So basically it's got these giant rubber arms attached <laughs> to the side. And when the truck jumps, they kind of, bounce around so everybody does the zombie arms at the show and the funny thing is in our competition rules it simply states and back to the whole competition nerdy thing which is what i'm into the competition mm -hmm. rules say that the, the first part of the truck that crosses the finish line is how we score it mm -hmm. there's no transponders on these trucks it's all timed based off of my camera so the zombie arms stick out a couple feet past the nose of the truck mm -hmm. so it hasn't i have not seen it happen but in theory <laughs> the zombie truck could win by the fingertips, which the other trucks don't have. So if, you, if you're out there and you want to build a monster truck, build it with something long on the front, because that that is that is within within the rules. I don't know if I could assign anybody to zombie, because really? zombie's kind of zombie's probably one of the fan favorites now. Right. Um, I mean, zombie goes out and all the kids are, are doing the zombie arms, but. As like our drivers, because when you say the truck, I relate the truck a lot to our drivers right. um, and our driver athletes who participate. And we have like so many, such a varied range of drivers that drive mm -hmm. Zombie. Uh, you know, some of the older guys that have been in it for a while, some of the younger drivers, guys and gals that drive that truck. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can assign Zombie to one. I know that's, no? a, that's like a cop out answer. <laughs> that's lame. Well, I, I think, what was it, Casey Kerwin was, the I think, the most popular driver last yeah. year. They they had voting. I mean, I guess that would have been my that guess. That would work. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's, there's, there's so many different ones. Mm -hmm. And that's like wh when I was a kid, like Gravedigger's, you know, the name recognition one. Right. Which is an easy answer. Right. Uh, but there's so many different ones, and it's, it's really cool because we have new ones, like, coming in every mm -hmm. year. 
Uh, yeah. We have the, the Bakugan Dragonoid truck is one of our newer ones. Mm-hmm. And Camden Murphy drives that truck. And, of course, he does NASCAR starts, and he's mm-hmm. here in town. Uh, so whenever we happen to be at, like, the same show together, we're talking about NASCAR, we're talking about iRacing, and then he hops in the truck, and, <laughs> and I go upstairs. It's just another cool, like, interlap between the two. Right. And one more to wrap this up, uh, just because this was another one that came up at dinner. Max D., which which of our drivers do you think would be Max D? Because that's kind of a. What was it that Otto said it, that is that his kid described it as like scary but not too scary. Scary was but it? not too scary. So who's the scary but not too scary driver? Max in the D is NASCAR loud. Field? That's a loud truck. It's got the big face on the side. It's got the spikes all over it. Uh, it's actually got more world championships than Gravedigger does, uh, by mm-hmm. by a good number. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go by Tom Mentz, who's the, the name that you, you think of if you think about Max D. Mm-hmm. Who's been loud this week? I don't know. Chris Overland's been pretty <laughs> in everybody's <laughs> face. I don't know if that counts as loud. That's not, uh, that's not a bad <laughs> thing, Chris, if you, if you listen to it. That's good. Because uh, Tom's so over the top. So Chris has been loud. Everybody Commanding is, personality. Yeah, and maybe it's because it, people have only been here for one day, so they've yeah. been kind of like shy. So mm-hmm. you can feel free to add a note to the end of this. If somebody, by the end of the week when I'm gone, <laughs> is the loudest one in the room, give it to them. So tentatively, <laughs> I'll give it to Chris. <laughs> Eric Smith has been kind of rounding people up and uh-huh. had everybody in his room playing some old NASCAR games last night. <laughs> it's got to go to somebody loud. Yeah. So I'll go with Chris or Eric for now. But if you see somebody yelling for the rest of the week, feel free to, to add a note that they can, they can take that one. All right. I will do that. All right. Evan Pasoko, it has been a pleasure awesome to have you on downshift and uh i don't think that's something we expected to talk about was it comparing the e-nascar guys to monster trucks it's <laughs> it's, it's fun i i love nascar and i love the i racing stuff and equally so i love doing all the monster jam stuff so uh i'm happy to be again just for the day in charlotte and mm-hmm. roaming around at the stations and, and checking thing everything out but uh it's good to meet you first yeah, and foremost likewise and uh, like I mentioned at the at the start, I listened to all the podcasts, so yeah, uh, thank I, I don't you. know if I can live up to some of the more exciting guests that have been on it, but uh, certainly happy to be part of it. No, I think we might have nailed it there. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right, Evan, it has been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. All right, back here at eNASCAR Media Day here with uh, Justin Melillo of The Racing Experts, one of the... Uh, foremost sites covering this eNASCAR iRacing World Championship. Justin, glad you could join us here in Charlotte for Media Day. I'm glad to be here. Now, you had a uh, you had a pretty long drive, I guess it was, to uh, get down here. Where'd you, uh, where'd you come from? How'd that all go? Uh, well, I left Long Island at 6 o'clock last night and uh-huh. made the trip overnight. A couple of rest stops here and there, but I'm here now and I'm ready to cover. <laughs> so, uh, still fresh or pulling all-nighter then? Yeah. Well, well, we'll figure that out later <laughs> on in the day. <laughs> uh, there's sodas and energy drinks everywhere, I guess. Now, you you were one of the, you were, I, I would actually say the expert on the eNASCAR iRacing Pro Series over the past fall. You know, 20 drivers punched their ticket into this World Championship Series, uh, filling out those other 20 spots. A lot of returning names, a lot of familiar names you know, from years, years past, only a couple of true rookies. So let's kind of go through that uh, Pro Series season, uh, you know, just some of the things you observed. Obviously, it's the Xfinity Series car, so it's a little little bit different than the Cup car. But, you know, what were some of the things, who were some of the drivers that really stood out to you over that Pro Series season? Well, of course, the champion was Ray Alfala, and he's a four-time champion in the, you know, the main World Championship Series. So right. uh, to see him get back to where he was in 2018, when he hoisted that fourth trophy, mm-hmm. um, it it really put into perspective the type of season that he had in 2019 that he even ended up back in the Pro Series. Mm-hmm. Um, but we can expect definitely some good things out of him in the 2020 season. Um, you, you saw uh, some returning guys like John Gorlinski, Bob mm-hmm. Bryant, um, Steve Sheehan, mm-hmm. that... They haven't really been around in the last couple of years, and now they're coming back. Mm-hmm. And they were able to show their worth during the uh, 2019 Pro Series. So, um, like you said, we got a lot of returning guys, but then you've got the rookies. You've got mm-hmm. uh, guys like Colin Keister, mm-hmm. who 
never ran a pro series before the road to pro this year mm -hmm. and he worked up through the through that through that truck series mm -hmm. and he's he's pretty much the freshest face that's probably out there right now mm -hmm. yeah graham bolin obviously another standout oh absolutely I, how could i forget about graham he won <laughs> two races this season in the pro series yeah. which that that's incredible and and he he definitely he was the other guy with Ray that it was between them two for the for the Pro Series championship. So that was uh, that was really fun to watch throughout the the entire seven weeks. No doubt. Now, obviously, the biggest change after the Pro Series from the previous season, 2019 had a driver draft for 24 of the guys, and then eventually a lot of other drivers got picked up. This year, all 40 racing for pro teams, no independents anymore and a free agency process. And you've kind of been the guy who's been on the ball, you know, throughout this free agency process. And everybody's getting announced by the time this is out, you know, all 40 drivers and what teams they're going to be on public. So, you know, you've known a lot of these guys. You've talked to a lot of these guys for a very long time. Were there any real surprises to you about where some drivers ended up? Um, the only one that really surprised me too much was um, seeing – the champion Zach Novak leave his team of Fresh Fenway Racing. He's heading over to Richmond Race uh, Richmond Raceway Esports mm -hmm. uh, in the 2020 season. He's joining up with his teammate, though Jimmy Mullis. They're you know they have these teams and then they have teams underneath the teams. Mm -hmm. So you know he's they're teammates on Richmond Raceway, but they're also teammates underneath that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of that going on and a lot of people that are you know joining up together that way that was really the only one that surprised me though yeah. um more or less it was through this free agency process just seeing where everybody was going to land everybody was going to land on a team mm -hmm. um regardless of what was you know going on they from what i understand they all made offers or they were all given offers and they mm -hmm. could choose to accept it they could choose to decline it and see if there was another offer on the table mm -hmm. and you know, you had guys like Malik. He's heading over from Rich, Richmond Raceway. He's heading over to Joe Gibbs now for the 2020 season. And you've mm -hmm. got um, Ray and Bobby, who are both going to be on the new VRS team. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, interesting to see where everybody lined up. About one-third of the field ended up where they were last season, mm -hmm. and then the rest all moved to different spots. And it's... It's going to be a good season to see how those teammates interact with each other and, and work together and try to win overall. It's also a bit of an adventure to have to totally redo your notes, right? Uh, it's, it's not that bad. I mean, I, I've been working on my notes for um, probably the past week and a half or so, trying mm -hmm. to figure out where everybody's been going. And um, it's, it's not that terrible. It's definitely going to be... You know, I'm going to look at the six car and I'm going to think, oh, that's Novak. And nope. Nope. It's going to be lying in that car next year. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it'll be different. But right. it, it's at, at the end of the day, they're all racing for the same thing. And uh, it's going to be fun to watch. No doubt. Now, obviously, uh, you know, a lot of changes for the 2020 season. But in the end, it all starts at Daytona. So. You know, I kind of want to kick it off. That that Daytona race last year, just so exciting, coming down to the final lap. And, you know, the guys who actually are teammates now, Zach Novak and Jimmy Mullis, you know, I, th I think it was 1-2 there. You know, going into Daytona, a lot of guys out there, you know, are really going to want to make a statement. But based on what you've seen from plate tracks before, I mean, who's your Daytona pick? It's so hard to pick a Daytona winner because <laughs> any – any single one of them could win on any yeah. given week, and that's even more so at a play track because mm -hmm. you got the guys who are gonna, you know, try to win the race on lap one. You got the guys that are gonna stay in the back, and then at the end of the day, they're all trying to win it at the end of the race. Right. Play tracks are always the wild card, and it, it was very. I I really liked how Zach was able to bookend the season with mm -hmm. a win at Daytona and then a win at Homestead for the championship, and mm -hmm. I I feel like. When you start your season off the right way at Daytona, it only means that that can continue throughout the season. Mm -hmm. No doubt. I mean, and you, you bring up Homestead, and I mean, we all watched Homestead, and we all watched that final lap battle, and we all watched Zach and Keegan, and they kept it clean. That's, you know? that's the important thing is that they kept it clean. And, and 
it's where everybody's trying to build the the e NASCAR, the esports up, and nobody wants to see a bunch of guys wrecking mm -hmm. for whatever. Mm -hmm. The the fact that Keegan had the respect to not wall Zach coming right. off that corner on the final lap, it, it just it shows volumes to Keegan's character, and it also you know talks volumes about the series that everybody respects one another mm -hmm. that all 40 drivers are going out there they're all trying to win but they're all going to respect each other at mm -hmm. the end of the day and put on the best possible racing that's that's out there and that was for that forty thousand dollar prize for the championship well now it goes up to a hundred you think you think that if in the final race of the season this year we're in a similar situation in turn three and four between i don't care which two drivers you think it changes when the number's 100 instead of 40 at all? I don't think it really does. I, no? I think that these guys really do have a, a level of respect for each other. A lot of them are young kids, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them are, are on the younger side of, of the, you know, the age group. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe, maybe not. It, it really depends on, on the character of the person that's coming there. But I really do feel like we've got 40 really great drivers that are competing in this 2020 season. And I, I really do think that the level of respect is there that, I mean, it could happen and it could put on an amazing show and an amazing finale and we could have that, that beat and bang and come into the line and it could be, you know, on, you know, video reels for, for generations to come. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at the end of the day, that, that battle between Zach and Keegan is at the same level mm -hmm. of amazing racing. Right. And they didn't need the contact. No, for sure. I mean, that whole Homestead race was just that way with... The two of them, Bobby was right up there for most of the race. Blake Reynolds had, you know, his moments too there. Different, you know. Differing strategies and all that. Blake yeah, was, exactly. Blake was trying the, the short pit strategy, hoping for a caution. He didn't get it. Mm -hmm. um, Bobby was kind of there, but kind of not there. It was, you know, it, at the end of the day, it really ended up coming down to, to Keegan and Zach, which is pretty much what everybody expected, though. Right. Because they, they dominated the entire season. Keegan... He would get out to tremendous leads throughout the entire season. Uh, it was it was incredible to watch. And and Zach, he was always there. He was always in mm -hmm. contention. It, when it came down to it, he was always one of the ones to watch when it came down to it. And just kind of ticked off win after win after win. Mm -hmm. Now, you got to kind of know where I'm going with this talking championship for. I know it's early. I mean, we're talking in January right now, and the season's not going to end for quite a while. But... If you had to make a championship four pick right now, who are your four drivers that you would have? And we'll come back to this at the end of the year. Who are the four you'd have? And out of those four, who would you give that title to? Well, this is a very early pick to make, <laughs> but um, the uh, it, it's hard not to put the champion back in there, Zach mm -hmm. Novak. It's hard not to put Keegan Leahy back in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely see those two having a path to the, the final four. But then you look at those other two spots, and it's it's such a grab bag that there there's 38 other drivers that could all fill those two spots. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't see where a, a guy like a Ray Alfala doesn't make it back to the championship four, mm -hmm. um, and and I don't see where a guy like uh, uh, a Bobby Zelensky also doesn't make it back to the championship four. I mean, the the way that the schedule works out, mm -hmm. you know, he's a road course ace. Right. You know, he could just win one of the road courses at the end of the season and, and win his way into that championship mm -hmm. four. So, um, you know, if, if those were the four, I'd, I'd say those would be the four early, early guesstimation right. on that. And if I had to pick a winner out of all four of those, I'd it's hard to not root f or not pick someone like a, a, a Keegan Leahy again. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I thought he was going to be the champion but, you know, it, it turned mm -hmm. out not to be that. It turned out to be between Zach and, and Keegan, and Zach ended up getting the best of them that day. Yeah, I mean, all four of them had such different paths to that championship for Bobby, as you mentioned, winning the road course. He was last going into that, that uh, road course race. Yep. So it, it was definitely win or go home for him, and he ended up pulling it out. It was I remember that race between him and, and Michael Conti. Mm -hmm. Um and and Conti's a great road course racer as well. And it's been great watching him during this off season. He's been posting those videos on social yeah. media of um try to beat my lap between him and Logan Clampett and him and Nick Ottinger. Right. Um th those have been really fun videos to watch and um but you know, you you look at 
that that race from Charlotte last year, and, and it really was do or die for both of those guys, and Bobby ended up coming out on top. And all of those guys really you have to think of is in playoff contention. I think, you know, I think people may have been a little surprised not to see Logan in there, but obviously Conti was in there, and, you know, Ottinger had some great performances, won the uh, first all-star race on NBCSN. You know, it's – so I, I guess now we've already talked the championship four, but – who do, who do you have for those other four playoff spots? Because I mean, there's about 15 names that I think we could pull off the top of our heads. Luza, he's yeah. definitely one that could go in there. Conti, you know, both of them are champions. Mm -hmm. uh, Clampett, you could see him getting in there. You could see someone like a Brad Davies getting in there. You could definitely see a Nick Ottinger getting in there. Mm -hmm. There's so many different people that you could put in that final eight. And, and I, I think it's really going to be fun. Jimmy Mullis definitely came on at the end of the season last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Malik Ray was showing signs of, yeah. of brilliance as well. So, I mean, y you, you go down the list, and I don't think you can, you can truly narrow it down this early in the season, though, because it's, it's crazy early. You don't know who's going to have the, the luck on their side. You don't know who's going to have mm -hmm. um, the right setups going into it. Um, th there's a lot of work that needs to be done still. Um, mm -hmm. Up leading up to Daytona and through this whole entire season. So um, maybe we'll have a surprise at the end of the year. Maybe none of those drivers yeah. are even in there. You never know. Yeah, you have a sleeper pick for anybody who wasn't in the series last year that you're that might be able to crack the playoffs. Well, I'm definitely looking at Grant Bolin. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, he definitely showed um, a, a lot of speed during the Pro Series. Um, I, I, I don't see him not being a threat this season to win at least one or two races mm -hmm. and um he's with joe gibbs this year as well so mm -hmm. him and malik will be working together and mm -hmm. um it, it's it's going to be a fun season though no doubt now before we let you go uh justin malillo the racing experts tell us a little bit more about everything else that you do with the racing experts because obviously you cover e nascar and i racing you know very intently but i know it's not the only thing you do over there no i i cover uh straight up nascar as well i mm -hmm. went to 12 races last season um and and you know was part of the the media center for um a, a third of the season mm -hmm. um i i drive to every racetrack which is uh an adventure from long island definitely an adventure the closest track to me is pocono so mm -hmm. now that they're only going down to one weekend there's going to be a lot more driving next season to be able to match that but right. um that's that's what I do. I'm, I'm I my my goal is to to have a job somewhere in the NASCAR media in mm -hmm. some point in my future. And you know, e NASCAR is part of it. I've I've been sim racing for my whole life, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I, I started out on a Macintosh computer in my grandfather's house, <laughs> uh, playing Bill Elliott's NASCAR Challenge. <laughs> so that is a throwback. Definitely a throwback. Um, I, I've been playing. Um, NR 2003 for, for years. I, I'm a league administrator. Um, I, I run in a, a league that's on iRacing as well. So, mm -hmm. I mean, sim racing has been my life. Mm -hmm. And to see what these guys are doing in the eNASCAR iRacing series, the World Championship Series, is just incredible that it's gotten to a point that it's getting the attention from the teams, that it's getting the attention from drivers like, you know, Dale Jr., Denny Hamlin, William Byron, Kyle Larson. Um, that they're coming out there and, and having their own teams in there. Mm -hmm. um, it, where we're at right now in the 11th season of the World Championship Series for NASCAR, for mm -hmm. eNASCAR, is uh, I, I feel like this is only the beginning, that mm -hmm. maybe in a couple of years this could be something that y gets talked about right next to the actual NASCAR Cup Series. Mm -hmm. No doubt. And uh, Justin Melillo, the racing experts, uh, just tell us how to follow you, how to follow, uh, you know, your site, your media outlet before we sign off. Uh, well, my my Twitter handle is where you can reach me the best. It's at Justin Melillo. Um, you can follow my work at theracingexperts.com. And, um, yeah, I'm just excited for this season to get going. No doubt. Justin, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Uh, another great set of interviews from Chris, Evan, and Justin. Looking forward to hearing Evan on the mic tomorrow night, 9 o'clock Eastern. Tuesday night. 
Just well, in case you don't know when they're listening to our <laughs> I was like, our tomorrow podcast. is Tuesday. But yeah, yeah, yes. good point. Tuesday yes. night. Tuesday night. Chris, when's this going out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, if you're it has to go out today now. No pressure, <laughs> but it oh must God. go out today. <laughs> Monday. <laughs> So much for my uh, Tuesday morning planned deployment, guys. Nope, nope, <laughs> not happening. <laughs> Drop everything. So, speaking of Daytona, if you haven't noticed a theme, Kevin is uh, about to change his mailing address. Last year, Kevin just was like living in Germany, but it seems like for the last you know month, because of meetings and, and going back to Daytona, stuff, yeah, yeah, going to Daytona, going to again. Daytona uh, with a couple of guys here. Steve, Tony, Otto will be uh, will be headed down. Uh, Chris, you want to you want to work in the office outside of Boston where it's dreary and sleety and wow. snowy and you want to hang out here on thursday well friday well greg see you're you're missing something are you going we to daytona too no we oh. <laughs> no we have two easy work from home days i mean if you get dumped on snow again in new hampshire you know <laughs> you can you can just work remotely so much you don't AI have to worry about it. this week <laughs> so much ai <laughs> yeah, but anyway we'll be down there a few of us from the office be my first Daytona 500. I've been to the Rolex 24 too many times to count, but my first 500. So it'll be interesting to see how the facility uh, is different for the, the, the two races. Uh, got some meetings lined up, but also it'll be great to run into some iRacing members if they're around. So look for the four guys wandering around with iRacing gear on. Stop by and say hello. You have to direct all of the downshift hate mail to Kevin, though, because Greg and I didn't yeah. book for this trip. Yep. <laughs> 100% <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody's got a complaint for me, you've got to be my go between. All right. I'll, take, I'll handle <laughs> the complaints. Well, I keep seeing the guys need to get in here in the broadcast room to get ready for Tuesday night's event. So, for Kevin Bobbitt, Chris Leone, I'm Greg West. Don't forget to rate and review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever else Chris will put this stupid thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> And on that note, we'll see you at the track.